Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm your host tonight, Brady Harron, and on behalf of the Sofa Shop, I'd like to welcome you to this, the latest in our series of Q&As with Tommy Bowl Legends. Don't you do a thing until you see the Sofa Shop. Don't you do a thing until you've seen the Sofa Shop. Now, last week's Q&A with Hall of Famer Fred Dickerson was a sellout. And I'm sure you'll all agree it was a splendid night. I'd also like you to know that everyone seated in row G that night has made a full recovery and won't be pressing any charges. So allow me to introduce tonight's guest. He is, of course, a 13 times runner-up in the Super Cup final. He's a nine times runner-up in the league MVP. The scorer of more than 37,000 do-wacky points. A poll on the league's MySpace page named this man the second greatest player of the 1990s. The Tommy Ball Tribune has described him as a man who left a mark on the game that will never be forgotten, no matter how hard we try. He remains the only player to be sent off twice in the same game for inappropriate conduct. His nicknames are many and varied. The uncaped crusader, the crooked captain, but perhaps most famously, the Traralgon Tattletale. But with his wild playing days behind him, he's now an outspoken, yet much-loved member of our Tommy Ball commentary team. It is, of course, the legend, Tim Hine. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, look at all the people. Wonderful. Tim, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank How you. have you been? A-, a lot of people thought you wouldn't be here tonight after last week's events and court case. It's a... So it's a great surprise to have you here, I have to say. Well, you know me, it's the fans first. Well, the agent first, obviously, he gets a portion. But the fans first. Then The fans, obviously, those who are here tonight want to see me and it's a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm just pleased to be here. Well, I'm contractually obliged to be here and remunerated to be here. And uh, it's wonderful to be here. Again, thank you. And it's funny you should speak of fans because tonight is all about fans. Now, I know everyone here in the audience has paid, well, $200 a ticket to be here, mm. but with a bit of a change for tradition, we're not going to reward them by letting them ask questions of you. Instead, we have allowed our Patreon supporters to send in a bunch of questions about you, your Tommy Ball career, the state of the game now, and they're from all over the world. I'd like to put those questions to you and well, just hear what you have to say. Fire away. All right. Fire away. Our first question comes from Ross from Scotland. And Ross says, Hi, Tim. I wanted to hear more about your controversial opinion on the new Hawkeye camera technology compared to the traditional use of actual Hawk's eyes. Are highly accurate scores really more important than the spirit of Tommy Ball? You're forever living in the tension, aren't you, with a game like Tommy Ball between holding to the tradition and the spirit of the past and moving with technology. But this is one of those occasions where the tradition was more accurate, I think. I think. I mean, the facts don't bear that out, but I think. And, uh, and I think Ross thinks so too. Thank you, Ross. Our next question comes from Albert, who describes himself as a long-time die-hard Canadian Tommy Ball fan. He says, go Montreal Tooks. He's a big fan of the Tooks. Oh. He says, do you think Tommy Ball is a bad sport for youth to be playing? When did you start yourself? As we all know, only people over the age of 18 may attend games, for obvious reasons. But I was wondering whether or not I should support my children in their Tommy Ball dreams. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I, this is where I really am quite controversial, but I think it's vital. Some people um, don't agree, and obviously there are all sorts of reasons for that, but it's vital for kids to be playing games like Tommy Ball. It, it, it's vital unless we, for us to identify the talent early who are going to survive some of those earlier games. Sure, illegal games, but still, they're there. And if you're going to come out... I mean, my kind of talent doesn't come across along every day. And if you're going to have another Tim Hine, you need to be looking early to find out uh, if and where there is another Tim Hine. I can, mean, you, can you tell us a little bit about your early days of Tommy Ball yourself? Were you playing in illegal backyard games when you were young? Yeah, I was playing it in the backyard. Uh, I was playing with other kids around the area. We were all doing it. That's what it was like in those days. And uh, you develop skills. You do learn some bad habits. But those bad habits, gee, they come in handy when you turn pro. 
and uh, I, I would come home sometimes with a broken arm, but that's vital stuff. I mean, that's just good childhood play. How did your parents feel about your sort of Tommy Ball dreams? Oh, they were very supportive, uh, very supportive. In fact, they often I'd come home and they'd send me back to play for just a little bit longer, feeling I hadn't really gone as intensely or been away as long as they hoped. Yeah, strange. Other kids were being called home for dinner. I was being encouraged to stay out longer and I appreciate my parents' support in that. So you'd be out there playing Tommy Ball on your own, presumably, when all the other kids had gone home, just like what? Just throwing yourself up against a wall or something? All night, yes, yeah. sometimes. Sometimes for days. Yeah. I mean, it's that kind of commitment that young players need from their parents, investing in them, showing them that kind of uh, attention, well, or lack of attention in my case, that proves so strategic. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Have you seen your parents lately since what happened a few years ago? No, no, I haven't seen them since I was in grade five. Uh, yeah, I, I, whatever talent I was born with, uh, that just maximised it. And uh, they were maximisers, and, uh, and I'm a maximiser, and I've maximised my talent, and that's why, I mean, some of the statistics you were reading out before, they're very humble to hear. I mean, you might want to read some of them again a bit later on. Uh, but that's, that's, it, it all comes together and into a, what, one hell of a flourishing career. So your advice to Albert and, and his own young children is basically send them out, see as little of them as possible, get yep. them playing. Well, you can't have too many distractions. Christmas, for instance, is a real distraction. I know in many, many families and with many kids, birthday parties, those sorts of things. Sure, it's once a year. That's too much. You can't get away from the sort of concentration you need out in the backyard playing illegal Tommy Ball games. Another question from Tyler Q. How do you feel about the shift to helium field balls they implemented around the time of the rhombus change? Do you feel it's changed the game too much? <laughs> It certainly made it a higher sport, hasn't it? Yeah. Obviously, previously, they were using the hydrogen field bowls until what's forever been known as the mini Hindenburg incident <laughs> with those, those bowls that were being stored on the sideline. It was, a, it was a terrible day for Tommy Ball. Spectacular footage, though. Still some of the most spectacular footage the sport's ever produced. But it did result in the switch to helium field bowls. Yeah, and, and I think that's probably for the best. I mean, I mean, there's been a fair... Again, it's one of those things where I, I thought... Playing with a with a hydrogen ball, it did feel different. It did uh, feel uh, it was in some ways harder to kick. My my statistics probably in one sense, if they were played with a helium ball, uh, my kicking would have gone a little bit further. My throwing might have been uh, curved more. I mean, so we had a bit of a disadvantage, and to some degree, I think some consistency should be there. Safety again, well, these kind of rules and regulations. If you if you live your life by those, you end up not really living at all. So, yeah, no, I think that makes sense. I mean, you famously were a very big advocate of the switch to radon field balls, although being a radioactive gas, that would be tremendously dangerous. But I, I, I always felt you thought it would add some jeopardy to the game, an element of risk that people love. There's one rule I've got in life. Tommy Ball first. Well, Tim first and Tommy Ball. But Tim and Tommy Ball, are, I mean, they're pretty much the same thing, aren't they? Mm. So I think Tommy Ball first, whatever's good for the game is good. How can it not be good for the players if it's good for the game? How can it not be good for the fans if it's good for Tommy Ball? That's a very concise saying. <laughs> we have a question here from Jeffrey. This is a question of pronunciation. Is it Tommy Ball or Tommy Ball? I've heard it both ways, to be honest. Oh, Tommy Ball. Not Tommy Ball. No, 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 no. Tommy Ball. No. When the game internationalised, of course, a bit of this comes in, and that's fair enough, different places and different pronunciations, but I'm a bit of a traditionalist, so I, I stick with Tommy Ball. What about, did you agree when they dropped the U when they wanted to try and Americanise it a bit? Tommy <laughs> It used to have a U in it. Did it? Yeah. Well. Like colour. I, all right. Well, some more intellectual types might, might you know, who, who, who read, might um, have found that confusing. It's Tommy Ball. It's, it's, it's forever Tommy Ball for me. That's what's on my merchandise. That's the, the name that I've tried to trademark over the years and failed. But it's Tommy Ball. So there you have it. Straight from the horse's mouth. It's Tommy Ball, not Tommy Ball. That's right. All right. We have one here from Sid67. Hi, Tim. How did you feel when Jim Mulligan broke your league record for most injuries in a single game? And a follow-up question, how do you think Jim's game compares to the game where you broke both legs and still managed to finish the cross hop? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. And I cover this in, a, there's a whole chapter in my book uh, on the cross hop uh, incident and the way I was able to perfect 
that. And two chapters, in fact. Two chapters are there. Mm. I, okay, I haven't haven't read it all yet. But the the part of it that I really love is the bit where I explain uh, about that particular incident on that particular day. And it, I mean, it's to break both your legs and to continue to complete the cross hop is um, I don't think there's probably any other player that's ever done that. Um, with, with the exception of Fred Dickerson. But I, I, I think that mine is... He did standard. it three times, in fact. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I mean, after you've done it once, I mean, it, once, three, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's doing it the once that really counts. And um, as one of the only people, then, has, has done that, I, I, um, I feel proud. I feel proud on the day I was able to execute the way I wanted to in practice. And this is what comes when you practice with broken legs. You're able to get out there and perform with broken legs. And um, that's, that's another advice, I think, for young players that, um, that I cover in the book. What happens in practice is, is what plays out on the field, and it's that kind of unique situation you need to be prepared for. So you would sometimes just deliberately break your legs in practice so you'd be prepared for it to happen in the game? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, I, I did most of my training with at least one broken leg, sometimes with two broken legs. Yeah, I, I mean, I found it an advantage in the end, flexibility, that kind of thing. But not everyone is able to do that. It's, it sort of takes a Tim Hine to pull off that kind of commitment to the game. You've got to be committed to the well, game. Well, you can see why the Tommy Ball Tribune described you as a perhaps only 10 to 20 times in a generation player. Yeah, well, well I mean, that's right. I mean, and, and, I mean, they'd know. As a follow-up to Jeff's earlier question, Sid67 also pointed out that uh, in Tommy Ball, the second M is silent, which not a lot of people realise. Mm. I've been told that too. Otherwise, otherwise, of course, it would be Tommy Ball as opposed to Tommy Ball. Yeah, yeah. So that silent M just slightly changes the pronunciation. Yeah, I tried to trademark it with, with, uh, set with three M's, uh, but it was, it was not able to be done. No, not, You couldn't do that one? No. Apparently Fred Dickerson already had done that. Yeah, I, be, I mean, to I, it. but, I, you know, once I realised that, I, didn't, I realised it was not a good idea. Tadas from Lithuania says, Hi, Tim. I play Tommy Ball as an amateur, usually one short 30-hour game over the weekend every other month. There's this guy, and he's my Fred Dickerson. He always outplays me and brags how good he is at Tommy Ball for the rest of the month. I really want to become a better player and put him in his place, but I feel my day job is dragging me down. I work as a delivery guy, and I'm not out of shape enough to compete with my friends who have desk jobs. I try to compensate for my fitness by eating junk food, but as you know, being overweight is not enough to be good at Tommy Ball. What routine and lifestyle changes would you recommend? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and this is one of the great advantages of Tommy Ball is the longer you're out of the game, in some ways, the, the better at it you get. Certainly, you get more match fit. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm more match fit now than I've ever been. Um, I mean, I've only got one broken leg at the moment, but that I could, you know, I could... I could go out and play tomorrow. Oh, careful. You'll start those comeback rumours again. Oh, well, those comeback... Yeah, well, I'm not a, entirely a... I can understand the comeback rumours. Like, my fans want to see me come back, and, and I could come back, and I've tried to come back. And, um, again, that's all covered in the book. But I... Um, sorry, what was the question again? I can't remember, to be honest. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, let me take this opportunity to mention some other things that are in the book. Uh, Hang on a second. Let's, let's, let's crack on with some questions first. Okay, sure. Robert asks, what is your opinion of the catchman interpretation of the live ball rules? Yeah, I mean, this was brought in after I finished playing. I think if I'd been able to do that, then I would have been even greater than I was, than I am. But my greatness stands as it was. I've heard rumours about the newer versions of the computer games, Tommy Ball computer games that are, that are coming up with, with, through EA Sports. You have the choice if, you, if, you, if you're choosing to play with the Tim Hine character, then you're able to choose if you're going to go with or without some of the new rules and the new equipment. That'll allow the players to, to see how great that I I was or could have been uh, or indeed am if I make a comeback if, and, and who knows. Can a clean-up crew please report to row G immediately? Another question here about new rules. This comes from Caron. How do you feel about the addition of trampolines? We know there's been a few accidents with the capes, but do you feel it's an exciting addition? The trampolines? No. No. No, I'm not. I mean, some of these players using trampolines, um, you know, they're just trying to avoid injuries. I don't think you should avoid injuries. I think injuries in Tommy Ball is, is an asset. 
When it comes to the cape, wearing a cape on a trampoline is is a, is a is a wonderful thing. I was do, uh, on the weekend doing some cape trampolining. I mean, you feel like Superman, don't you? You jump up and well, I can make kids out there. I'm Tim Hine, you know, with their cape on. Well, that's that's fair enough. All over, all across the country, kids are, are, are pretending to be Tim Hine with a cape on a trampoline. But in terms of the game itself. No, no, it's cheating. Ant from Connecticut sent in several questions. I'll try and keep it to just a couple. Mm. In most sports, the players cannot bet on their own games. Why is it a tradition that players in Tommy Ball are encouraged to place bets on the game and those bets are printed in the match program? (laughs) Well... I mean, you famously placed some outlandish bets on your games. It, it, that's, that's true. And... In fact, um, some of your broken legs weren't from training, they were from some of those, uh misplaced bets weren't they <laughs> well this is where the the wonderful merger the beautiful marriage between gambling and sport i think reaches its zenith in in tommy ball some people say that that um that that sport is a blight on a country uh that people get into trouble with sport and that they should stick to gambling that gambling teaches your character and mathematical uh, skills mathematical skills that's right another one from Ant. do you think it's unfair that most junior tommy ball players that the rookies are locked into five-season, 15-year rookie contracts when going pro. Do you think the exemption for players born in the month of August should be expanded to all Northern Hemisphere summer months? One of the important things that people don't understand about the rookie finance deal, and uh, people say, you know, is is the way in which it it allows you to maximise payments to retired players. Now, some people say you've got a conflict of interest. As a retired player... Uh, I'm not sure what that means. So, but I have to say, I think the important, if you're out there and you're young and you're fit and you're, and, 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 and you're, and you're playing, you're enjoying Tommy Ball, you, you don't need to be paid for it. I mean, if you really love the game, it's the retired players, the back ending of contracts that I think is really enabling the legacy of the game to go on and enabling me to continue to live and to continue to commentate and engage in, in things like this. So people want that. I mean, if they want Tim Hine to go away and not be paid for any more for playing, seeing I'm not playing, then, I mean, hey, fine, you know, there won't be nights like tonight. But I, I think people need to think a little bit more clearly about the, the future of the game and, and how important it is back-ending those contracts into retirement to maximise payments to legends like myself. We must, we must sustain the legends. Oh, Let yes. the retired players are what Tommy Ball is all about. It is, it is. Well, they are now. I mean, I, they weren't earlier when I was, but, but they are now, and I've come to appreciate that now. Your advocacy of payments to retired players has certainly increased over the years. I, 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 people say I'm too political, but I've found it important to get invo- involved in this. This is a justice issue, and, uh, and, and I'm proud to be associated with, um, you know, retired players receiving back-ended fat contracts from, from money that otherwise would have gone to, to younger players. You've got to keep the money out of the grassroots. It just, it's wasted. It contaminates the grassroots. That's the danger. Money is a corrupting influence. Yeah. It should be saved for later in your career when you're wise enough to know how to handle it. Well, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And what, where to place those bets. The f- <laughs> that's right. That's right. Chaz from Reno. I'm not sure this one will make it past the lawyers. We'll have to find out in post-production, but uh, let's give it a go. Oh, okay. I'm intrigued. I've always wanted to ask you about a memorable incident. What did those... Yeah, I'm getting a voice in my ear telling me. But it's all in the book. By the book. Samuel asks, How was it to play Tommy Ball when the notorious tortilla throw was still allowed? I know that it's not allowed today, but I can't really grasp the idea of playing with that allowed. Did it affect the overall gameplay? And would you say that today's players never would have lasted minutes back in your days? I've only heard rumours about this, and now when I get the opportunity to ask the legend himself, I won't hesitate. Such an honour and privilege to have the opportunity of a lifetime to ask you this personally. Thank you so much for everything you've done for the sport. It means a lot. Mm. 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 Gee, that's a good question, isn't it? That's a well-worded question. I thought you'd like the phrasing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, legend of the game. Yeah, no, look, I... um, Yeah, I mean, chance of a lifetime. That's a... a, Geez, that's a great question. (laughs) Great question. And uh, do you want me to read it again? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, just don't quite remember what it said. <laughs> Kieran from North Wales, thank you so much for taking the time off your busy schedule to answer the questions of us Tommy Ball fans. Being from North Wales, of course, Kieran is a fan of the Cymru Catapults. He says, "Go Cats!" First, I'd like to ask you about last night's display in the European League. Due to the hot weather recently, the quality of play has, of course, been poor. But I personally thought that Sam Jenkins' use of his water bottle to wet the floor beneath him was unfair and should have been stopped by the refs. 
I wanted to ask your opinion on this bold move. When artificial rain isn't an option, as it's not in Europe obviously, should the players be allowed to use their water bottles to wet the ground beneath them? I'd love to get an expert's opinion. Well, you've, if you want an expert's opinion, you've come to the right place, of course. But uh, I, look, I think this is innovative. I love this idea. I wish I'd used it. I mean, we use beer in my day, obviously. Um, but uh, but I, I think that's brilliant. No one's ever thought of that before. I mean, I thought of it. I never did it. I never said it to anyone at the time. But I think this is innovative. I love to see this kind of... This is one of those situations where that tension between the tradition of the game and, and, the, and the use of technology, or in this case, water bottles, uh, is the, the weight needs to go towards... What about the increasing trend towards players using synthetic water rather than organic water? That's great as well. I think that's great. I use synthetic water at home. Uh, I encourage its use. I think normal water is overrated. Synthetic water in some ways is closer to the beer we used to use. And, 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 um, but no, I think this is fantastic. I, I strongly encourage it. Andrew from Minneapolis, whose favourite team is the Norwegian non-binary black holes. Howdy, Tim. I want to get your thoughts on the new rule which would require teams to restrain their mascots from entering the pitch during stoppage time. I know I was personally disappointed with the 2014 ruling which allowed non-carnivorous mascots, but now this is really a step too far. We all remember the time you lured the Berkshire bear to scare its own defenders, leading to one of the most definitive tie-break victories in recent memory. Well, this is one of those situations, and and I cover this in the book as well, where you've got to innovate, you've got to use what's there. And, and I love to see people innovating. The fridge is an innovation. The water bottles on the ground are innovation. And, and you've got to, if you can use the mascots, then that's fantastic as well. And I, I think I was the first person in history to engage the mascots in the result of a game. Now, of course, that's, that's, it, became, it became widespreadly used and then it was banned. But I, I think it was an innovation. And you've got to innovate. Um, the, the way to be faithful to the spirit and tradition of Tommy Ball is to be continually innovating. My statistics speak for themselves. I mean, I just wouldn't have been as successful as I was had I not innovated in some of these, sure, quote-unquote, um, spurious activities. Since retiring, have you seen any innovation in the game of Tommy Ball that you didn't at least think of when you were playing? No. I mean, it's very, it's a bland game. Sometimes now, I, I think, I think the players are out there and they play the game. They're not thinking of other things. I mean, I used to think. I'm a thinker. And I'd be on the ground and I'd, I, I didn't look like I was thinking, but I was thinking. And, uh, and I'd think of ideas and uh, I'd be looking at the mascot and I'd, how can I engage, you know, how, how can I use that just to get those 20%, you know, that extra bit out of uh, the team and, of course, my own, my own performance. Is it possible that you had so many innovations and so many creative ideas that you have basically took them all? And the problem for modern players is there's no creative ideas left because Tim Hine had them all mm, first. Mm, that's true. I mean, I've heard that said before. It's a bit like with the... It's beat. in your book, actually. Well, well that's right. I yeah. mean, I quote it uh, uh, in my book and, and others can, can read it in the book if they buy the book. It's a bit like the Beatles. You know, it's because they came first and they wrote so many songs. People say it's not fair for songwriters coming afterwards because there's no melodies left. They're all gone. And, um, you know, Beethoven got a few and um, Mozart Taylor got Swift. a few. Taylor Swift has had a couple since. Taylor Swift, of course, has, 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 has been a bit of a... She's just a, picking up the scraps. She, well, that's right. It's what's left over after the Beatles. And when it comes to innovative ideas in Tommy Ball... Uh, I'm the Beatles and Mozart and Beethoven and Taylor Swift rolled into one. I've often been called the Taylor Swift of Tommy Ball and I think they're referring to all those artists in in one when they say that. Do you think that does justice to your creativity? (laughs) (laughs) It's, uh, well, I think... I think it's very limiting of you just to compare yourself to that handful of musicians when you were almost... You were beyond that. Well, I think it's one of those... When I say Taylor Swift, I mean all... Uh, many other artists in there as well. I mean, you just assume the Beatles, and, and I've mentioned them, and, and Mozart and, and, and Beethoven. But, of course, uh, so many others are in there as well. When you, I mean, Taylor Swift is short for the greatest in pop music. And so uh, just saying Taylor Swift really is shorthand. But in there is, a, is, is uh, so many more. And, and so it is when you say Tim Hine, you think all the innovative ideas possible in Tommy Ball. I mean, that's just shorthand. And beyond. It? Well, that's right. I mean, this is why the book is so um, interesting, because it's principles and for life, not just for Tommy Ball. If you put Tommy Ball first, life takes care of itself. That's what your parents always told you. That's right, that's right. Liam from Canberra. Hey, Tim, big fan of your work on the Tommy Ball court. 
What are your feelings on the rule change from three quarters to four fifths at the third penalty period? Oh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Can I just say, by the way, uh, following that question, your, your interview, it was 10 years ago now, on 60 Minutes, where you, you told the interviewer about your problems with numeracy and the fact you couldn't count beyond five, was so courageous and like, was such an inspiration to other people who couldn't count. Do you, do you still hear back from people about that? Is it still inspiring? And have you, have you since tried to learn to count? People, I mean, people always talk about these things as a limitation, but numbers beyond five are just five again, aren't they? I mean, really, it's just, why would you count to ten? You're just counting to five twice. And, and, and I, I've, I've always seen it as an advantage. Hmm. I mean, every number can be constructed using one, two, three, four, and five in some way. That's, that's what I'm told. And, and so I'm, I'm um, proud. Honestly, I'm proud. I mean, this is one of those things. You can't have other things in your brain if you're going to fit in innovative ideas. If you're a thinker, if you're a thinker like me, a legend and a thinker, then you can't have other things clogging your brain. And, and, and I mean, I, I pay someone to count for me now, and that's, I mean, that's great. I mean, he's part of my staff, proud part of my staff, helpful part of the staff, hitting up a great team of people who can count. Um, and uh, But no, I... I, I um, still think I've, it's, it's that kind of thing that's given me an edge in life. Tim, this, this has been a great experience. We've really appreciated your insights. We'd also just quickly like to once again thank the Sofa Shop for supporting this evening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Sofa Shop. Uh, don't do anything until you see the Sofa Shop uh, and, and buy my book. Ladies and gentlemen, can, just one more time, can we have a big round of applause for our guest tonight, the second greatest player of the 1990s as voted on MySpace. Tim Hine. Thank you. Thank you very much. You love you, Tim. I'll be, I'll, be in, I'll be out the back. Can, sorry, can I have everyone's attention for a minute? I'll be out, I'll be out in the foyer signing copies of, uh, of my book, My Lives. My Life in Tommy Ball. At, sorry, can I have your attention? Sorry. Sorry, My Lives my li- and My Life as a Tommy Ball in Tommy Ball com- to- commentating. Sorry, everyone can... Anyway, there they hurt. They love it. They're rushing. They're rushing for the table. I'd better get out there. Ladies and gentlemen, with those of you exiting via Beijing, please take extreme care. So all the questions in today's episode, plus some of the sound effects you heard in the audience, they came from Patreon supporters. If you'd like to join them, go to patreon.com slash unmadefm. Woo! Yeah! Go, Tim. You don't have to get so involved if you're a Patreon supporter. Tommy Ball. Tommy Ball. But you backing us does help us make more episodes, including, hopefully, more Tommy Ball episodes. We're really grateful. But we're also grateful to anyone who's just listening. If you'd like to find out more about Tommy Ball, maybe even check out our Tommy Ball t-shirts, go to Tommy Ball, Tommy Ball, we love Tommy Ball, dot FM. Go on, type it in. It works. Tommy Ball, Tommy Ball, we love Tommy Ball, dot FM. I'll also put a link, like, you know, in the notes and stuff. Because, you know, that's a lot to remember. Oh, what a champ. Jog on, Dickerson. Jog on. Go, Tim, you legend. <laughs> <laughs>